Dear Mr. Leduc, as per my conversation with Milan Kimlika, I understand that you intend to record approximately 75 minutes of original music with a 100-piece orchestra and 60 to 70-piece choir. The recordings would be made possible under the following terms and conditions. Dear Mr. Leduc, this is to confirm your date at Rudolfinum in Prague. Here is the schedule. October 5th from 9 to 1. Dear fellow musicians and technicians, in making the following requests, I'm trying to simplify the recording and make your jobs easier. In any case, I consider your experience to be invaluable. So if you feel there is anything that can be improved artistically or technically, please don't hesitate to bring it up. Also, I have some questions about the session. For example, what's the length of the reverberation in the room in which we will be recording? Since I'm looking for cathedral-like acoustics in the following pieces, No Passaran, Madrid Adagio, Stabat Mater 37, Das Reich, Once Upon a Time in Cornwall, and Zwei Kriege, is there a digital reverberation unit, for example, a Lexicon 480, that could give us the necessary acoustical effect? If this electronic doctoring goes against your technical standards, can we arrange the microphones to prolong the length of the reverb? Please let me know what you think. The Wings of Fire is a fictional story that I wrote to which I wanted to give a very special dimension through music. This symphonic suite is not only depicting all the emotional shades of my characters, but also it is portraying the great events that took place in between the two world wars, like the rise of the Nazi Empire and the Spanish Civil War. 40, not 40, 40, it's, it's too oh. flying The idea of putting a story to music came to me a long time ago. 
I was in France with my wife. We were going back towards the hills of Normandy. Suddenly, I saw a sign, Utah Beach. As we got closer to the beach, I saw a tank, an old American Sherman tank. It was there to commemorate the arrival of the American troops on the morning of June 6, 1944. I had a peculiar reaction. I started to cry and couldn't stop. I had a feeling that I had lived or had known that beach before, and the idea of writing a story about it came from some recollection that I had deep within me about the war, about the way those people suffered back then. There is a mezzo-soprano solo in No Passaran. I chose a pop singer because this is a revolutionary song that needs a truly passionate street interpretation. Again, even if her voice is rather powerful, we could need a distinctive pickup to get the best of two worlds. The magnificence of the choir and the symphonic orchestra, carefully blended with the passion of the six Spanish guitars and my blazing mezzo-soprano. I've listened to classical music all my life. My mother's an opera singer. She sang all over the world. Uh, so singing, uh, it was different in a sense that I've never done it. I've heard it from somebody else before. I've never done it. It was, uh, I could call that a, a challenge. It was a personal challenge for me to do this. Elizabeth Gridiaga's father is from Madrid. And I'm sure that's the secret. It's, it's purely genetic. She knows how to sing Spanish, not the words. That's very easy. Anybody that, that can speak Spanish cannot sing that way. She has all the Spanish musicality. It, it is natural. The acoustic uh, sound was very different for me. I'm very used to, to listening to the music in my ears very, very loud. I have monitors in front of me and bars when I sing with my band and uh, I'm used to having everything electric. When, uh, when you sing with an orchestra, when I sang with the orchestra, I had uh, the guitarist in back of me. I could not hear very loud. The, the, I couldn't hear the guitars very well or, or, or the music as loud as I am used to. Bravo. You like that? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So, tempo is good. Yeah. La The Spanish Civil War was only the prelude to the horrors that would shake the world throughout the Second World War. No Passaran conveys the hopes that moved the Spanish masses, strengthened by the numerous contingents of volunteers who were set ablaze by their social and political ideals.